And welcome to the Bullock Sports Report. I'm Josh Aubrey coming to you from on location in Brooklyn, Fred Shaver Field, the Southeast Bullock Lady Yellow Jacket flag football team getting ready to kick off the season as they'll host two games tonight, McDonough, the first game, and then South Effingham in the second. We'll have highlights of those coming up in just a little bit. As for the Georgia Southern Eagles, they are set to get back into action off a of bye week. They'll be hosting the Marshall Thundering Herd that game Saturday night at 8 o'clock. We'll hear from head coach Clay Helton and some of the players coming up in just a bit. As for area high school football, the Southeast Bullock Yellow Jackets, Friday night action at home. They'll be taking on Jenkins in a big region matchup. Statesboro High on the road in Brunswick. The Portal Panthers in action at home as they'll be taking on EC and the Bullock Academy Gators kick off region action at home against Frederica. We'll hear from all the coaches and players as well coming up in just a moment on the Bullock Sports Report. And a reminder before we go to break, hopefully you'll never be in an accident, but if so, please give our friends at the Sullivan Law Firm a call, 912-489-8888 or online at thesullivanlawfirm.com. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles coming off a big victory in their Sunbelt opener against Georgia State. This week, after a bye week, they're back in action. They're taking on the Marshall Thundering Herd. We had a chance to talk with head coach Clay Helton about the matchup. You know, uh, bye weeks are always a great opportunity for staffs. Uh, at one, we got to be a football fan, and I was glad not to be a football coach this past Saturday with everything, that all the craziness that went on in, in uh, college football last week. Uh, but it gave us an opportunity to really look at ourselves, look at our own tendencies, um, where we can grow offensively and defensively, how we can get fundamentally and technique better, plus to get a jump start uh, on a really good Marshall team that's coming off really two really good wins especially the win last week against App State uh, with a new quarterback. I thought Coach Huff and crew did an amazing job. Going to be a great atmosphere back at Paulson, uh, 8 p.m. national TV, be an electric atmosphere. I've always been appreciative to Dr. Marrero and, and our AD, Jared Benko, for creating such a unique environment. And here comes another one with a wide out 8 p.m. game national TV. Should be a lot of fun. When you're trying to go 1-0 each week in this conference, there has to be a sense of urgency. There's really no time off you, you know you have to be able to not only look at yourselves which we did and be real about okay hey this is our tendencies this is what other people are seeing you know this is where we need to pr- improve fundamentally and technique wise and go work on those things but it also you get an advantage to go take a day or two and be able to really scout your opponent and get a little bit of a head start also and so that's what we did we spent two days on ourselves last week of improving we ended up taking Thursday and yesterday, Sunday, to start the progression uh, of Marshall and try to jumpstart offensively, defensively, and special teams wise, because we know what a challenge this team creates. I've known Coach Daigie for a while, their offensive coordinator who worked for me at USC, um, you know, and is really, you know, has been a part of the air raid most of most of his coaching career. He's been able to take the base passing game of, of the air raid, the concepts, but really uh, proud for him because he's created balance within that running game. And Braxton's a great example of not only you know being efficient in the pass game, but he's not a, he's doing quarterback driven runs and he's creating with his legs when things aren't there. You don't see a lot of turnovers by this team. Two in five games, they're plus four turnover margin. Um, you know they they've done a really good job of that balance to be able to help their quarterback. Now you're talking about two programs that have great traditions. They have history within their programs. They have success within their programs. Um, and then you put Coach Huff, who's coached at the highest level, recruited at the highest level, unbelievable personality, great football coach, um, you know, really relates to his players. Uh, and you see them playing at a very high level. It's no surprise. You know, that's what Marshall has been. Um, I think that he's doing really a nice job with not only a young quarterback, but a first-time offensive coordinator and really settling in to their best offense of performance to date uh, in last game. So um, no surprise to me. Uh, Coach Huff has been so well respected in our in our profession for a very long time and uh, is doing a nice job. Well, Marshall's coming off a big victory over App State in which their quarterback rushed for over 150 yards and threw for over 150 yards, had five touchdowns in the game combined. The Eagle defense knows they're going to have their hands full. This is one of two quarterbacks who have started throughout the year but they're ready for whatever Marshall brings their way. 
We're really just building on what we're doing from the past week. Like I said earlier, really just learning from those little mistakes we make and just really trying to perfect them and fix them so we could just continue to build better and just going one and all in the week. Just trying to get the ball back to our offense and just taking uh, possessions away from their offense as well. And that's also a big factor in our defense is implementing takeaways in each and every game we can. We like try to go into the next week just really trying to better ourselves and improve on like the littlest things like a little step here and there or just having better eyes. And then also just our communication weekly. We're just trying to better it and just trying to make sure we're more efficiently as a whole and as a unit. Well, as for the Georgia Southern offense, looked pretty sharp, putting up 38 points this past uh, two weeks ago in their Sun Belt opener against Georgia State. The Eagles hoping their offense can continue to roll right along as they have a big game with Marshall. I think it's, it's a good time to uh, go into the uh, conference play with the bye week. Um, everybody get healed up, um, get their bodies ready and going so we could uh, do this last stretch. Absolutely, we know we always have to be we have to be balanced just to be uh, just to be great. So um, you know we. We take as much pride as we do in the run game as we do in the pass game, knowing that they all work, work with each other. So just uh, all the time we take grinding with each other, um, we all put in the uh, same type of work. And just to see all of that stuff come out um, on the field and everybody does well, it's just awesome to always see, especially with the guys that you love. So we're, we're going to this game with a chip on our shoulder, but at the end of the day, every opponent is the same. We, we all have to come out, play our best ball. It's always us versus us. So. You know, we, uh, we, we don't take that lightly, never take uh, a team like this lightly, and uh, we're just going to go in and put in the work. And stay with us. Coming up next, we'll hear from high school coaches. We'll also take you out here for the Southeast Bullock flag football season opener. This is Paul Newman with Statesboro Real Estate. Have you been on the sidelines? Well, now is the time to list your house. Let's G-A-T-A and get after those assets. Well, the Statesboro Blue Devils, uh, just like many other teams, 10 days off from the hurricane. They're on the road this week at Brunswick. We had a chance to talk with Matt Dobson and some of his players about the matchup. Uh, it, was, it was really good to see our guys this morning. They were excited, upbeat. Uh, they were ready to be back. Uh, you know, it's, it's always tough when you get a break right in the middle of your season like this. But they were excited to be here. Coaches were excited. Um, it's, it's, it's fun to be back together. And just asked our guys this morning, let's, let's – just do everything it takes these next five weeks um, and, and just do the steps that it takes necessary and then at the end of these five weeks, see where we're at. Brunswick was able to play. You guys haven't played in, in over two weeks. Does that give them an advantage or how do you look at it? Yeah, I think that they've just kind of continued in, in a routine. They, they weren't really out of school uh, very long. They played last Monday. Um, and then so they've, they've had a little bit of time to rest up but still been able to practice. And I think it definitely helps just being in a routine um, where we haven't been, but uh, they're they're a really good football team. So you know it's going to be a tremendous challenge whether they uh, were able to practice all week or not. So it's definitely um, definitely not advantageous for us for sure. What do you expect out of them? What do you feel like the keys are for the game we're playing? They are probably probably my two years here at Statesboro is probably the most athletic. Um, football team we've played now they were, you know last year obviously playing coffee county that, that won the state championship um was, was a really good football team but just from an athletic standpoint they're probably up there um from a size and athletic stand, standpoint as the, one of the best we've seen uh they're explosive you know you can play really two great downs on defense and get them in third and 13 and then they may hit a 40 yard touchdown play on you and so um Trying to trying to limit explosive plays is, is going to be big. Um, they're they're just really good at that. And then defensively, they're big and um, and very physical at the point of attack. And so uh, you, you got to stay ahead of the chains. Try not to get in long yarded situations because if you do, they're going to get after you uh, with some of their pass rushers they got and some of the, the the length they have on the edge. You know, just got to come out here with a different mindset. Hopefully, all the guys you know they was working on something over the uh, break, over the uh, you know little hurricane break but yeah I feel like we're gonna come out feel like we're doing good right now coming out good got a tough game for you Friday night on the road at Brunswick what do you expect out of them what do you feel like you have to do to win oh yeah they're a good team you know we don't have to come out there and give it us all you know fly to the ball and do all the things we've been taught to do by the coaches I mean, it feels good to be back and some of us been working over the um over the hurricane trying to get better so we could win and yeah that's 
that's what we got going on. It was tough for you because you guys have built some momentum, even though you lost to Glenn. You guys played really well. Yes, sir. Do you feel like you can carry that over? And where do you feel like you guys are doing well? Um, I feel like we're doing well as a team, like coming together. And yeah, I feel like I feel like we got Brunswick. I feel like we got them pretty good. The Bowling County Farm Bureau on Northside Drive is a multi-line insurance agent writing farm, auto, homeowners, life, health insurance, and more. Nick Sherrod and the other five local agents are on standby for your convenience for in-depth insurance review. And while you're there, check out the products from local farmers. Located at 940 Northside Drive, stop by and see them today. The Southeast Bullock Yellow Jacket football team. The game was scheduled for Thursday against Jenkins. They moved it to Friday. Big game against Jenkins, but this game is at Fred Shaver Field. We had a chance to talk with head coach Jared Zito and some of the players about the matchup. The good news is we should be fairly fresh and, and somewhat healthy, um, and, and, and we'll have four days of rest. Um, to try to get that second game in. Um, trying to keep a balance of, you know, people have plans uh, that they've made for a year and things we're trying to do for families. Just the same as Bullock County Schools, trying to keep fall break intact for, for the right reasons um, and still try to get these, these region games in. Um, and then hopefully after that, we can get back to some normalcy, get a little time off, and then, and then hopefully resume a regular schedule with that extension uh, that the GHSA put out. All this going on while you've got the biggest game of the season coming up <laughs> could determine one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, they're you know they're all big games, but certainly Jenkins. We we you know pre from a preseason standpoint, you you look at those guys along with uh, Calvary and, and Long is probably the, the top three uh, opponents for us in terms of region play. Um, you know, it, it's at the end of the day, I think. Preparation and practice are important, but, you know, it's still a player's game. And I think sometimes, you know, we as coaches feel like we get to cover X, Y, Z. And I've been a part of teams and, and programs and seasons where we had great week of practice. We did everything right, and we go out and get, get our butts beat. And then I've had the other thing where we hardly got any practice in. We had rain outs, maybe felt like we weren't real focused, and we go out on Friday night and we're, we're winning 49 nothing at halftime. So it still comes down to players – executing and performing and the one thing I feel really good about is our team is we've been really good at that on Friday nights for the most part and we're, we're mature and I, and I still say we're hungry. It's going to be really difficult to uh, get back in a routine after the obviously like a whole week and a half of missed practice and football but um, we're just happy to be back. Um, I think it's going to be a good week though we seem to be very locked in um, and we're just ready to play football again. You've got to argue your biggest game the rest of the way coming up Thursday night in Savannah against Jenkins. What do you know about them? How are y'all feeling about Thursday? Well, we know they're a really good team, but um, I think if we execute on all levels of the game, I think we're going to put up a really good fight. Um, I have confidence in our team and our ability, and um, I think we got it. Kind of missed out on some spots of trying to clean up from last week, and we getting back to it as in uh, getting on the field and stuff. So the progress that we're going to make is going to be phenomenal, hopefully. And as we progress through the week, we're going to go backtrack back on the things we missed from last week and continue to go forward from there to the next game. And as the week passed, being out, it kind of gave us a little, little time off for the break for rest and getting back ready for everything. So now you got probably one of your biggest games of the season coming up Thursday. Jenkins at their place, you know, could be the number two seed on the line for you guys, a chance at a home playoff. How are y'all feeling about this thing? We know that they're gonna be hungry. They they got a physical team, but also we kind of combine our stats and stuff with theirs. So we should be good in that in that situation as in physicality, so we ready for that and the execution for our players. The Bullock Academy segment is brought to you in part thanks to Floors Outlet of Statesboro, located on Northside Drive. Come by and visit Mo for all your floor covering needs. This is Paul Newman, State's Real Estate. I have three kids that attend here. I'm a proud sponsor of Bullock Academy Athletics and the number one ranked Gator football team. Go Gators! This segment sponsored in part by Total Tire of Statesboro, located at 2703 Northside Drive, featuring friendly, courteous staff 
Come see them today for all your automotive needs featuring alignments, suspension, brakes, tires, and more. The Bullock Academy Gators were scheduled to play Tattnall Square. Unfortunately for them, the hurricane hit. They canceled that game. Now they'll open up region play at Gator Rally against Frederica. We had a chance to talk with Aaron Phillips and a couple of the players about the matchup. So, you know, last week was our open week, um, and usually on open weeks we give them Monday and Friday off and, and try to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So uh, with the storm, you know, we, we just kind of checked up on all of our guys, make sure everybody was okay. Uh, if they needed anything, and uh, Miss Lisa and, and the board, they opened the school up for Saturday. was the first time we could get back on campus. So Saturday morning we had uh, a, a volunteer practice, um, and, uh, you know, we had about 31 of the guys show up um, out of the 46, um, which, which is pretty good. You know, I couldn't ask for, you know, a lot of kids were out of town, a lot of kids didn't have power still. Um, and then Sunday afternoon after our coaches meeting, we had our another install practice. Um, and we had a great two hour practice last night. You know, it was another, you know, uh, volunteer practice. And, and so the, the kids, uh, I think last night uh, we had 43 of the 46 or whatever it is. Um, so we're only missing three guys. And, uh, you know, it was great. Well, no doubt you guys, uh know the importance of this game. What do you expect out of Frederica? What are you looking at Friday night? Brandon Derrick's a great coach. You know, he's been doing a long time, you know, uh, from his days in Tennessee to, to Glenn Academy to, to, to Frederica. Um, you know, really good coach. They're going to be very well uh, coached. They're going to have a good scheme. Um, and they're going to execute at a high level. And, and, and we got to go match that, you know. And, and you're going to get everybody's best effort. You know, we, we say pressure is a privilege. And, and so, you know, whether it's number one in the region or number one in the state or whatever the case is, everybody that shows up wants to wants to knock down Goliath. You know, and, and you know, we don't look at ourselves like that right now, but, um, you know, that's how we kind of prepare, um, is that, that we want to go out and do what we do and, and make it hard on each other. I mean, it's definitely been different, you know, having some time off and not being able to practice, but, I think we'll bounce back from it. We'll be fine, you know, get to practice, work hard. You missed the game, uh, had a bye week. This week you got Frederica here. How are y'all feeling about that? What do you expect? I mean, I feel good. I mean, we just play our game and play how we've been playing and we'll be fine. I mean, it's definitely not the best place to be in, but we're a good team about communicating and talking to each other. So we've been pushing each other over the phone and just trying to get with each other just to go work out and do something. Now you get a chance to finally get back on the football field Friday night here against Fred Richard. What do you expect? How do y'all feel you go into the game? I feel great. We we have a little bit of a chip on our shoulder from last year. We just want to show up and show out. We just want to come after them. Well, as for this game right here, the Southeast Bullock flag football team, 62-0 in games played. They're hoping to run that to 64-0. Let's send you out for some highlights from McDonough and from South Effingham games. The Southeast Bullock Yellow Jacket flag football team opening up the season Wednesday evening at home, taking on McDonough in the first of two games. On offense, Kate Barron finds Chloe Cochran for a first down, and then it's J.C. Kitchens. To Cochran, back to Kitchings. She's going to turn the corner down inside the five-yard line. From there, the pitch to Barron. Unfortunately, she's picked off in the end zone. That ends the drive. The defense then decides they'll take over and score the first points of the game. A nice interception by J.C. Kitchens off the pick. She goes 43 yards, making a couple nice moves for the touchdown. The Jackets end up going for one. And it's Kitchings finding Natalia Odom. As Southeast takes a 7-0 lead, moving ahead. And it's Kitchings to Chloe Cochran, just shy of the goal line. Kitchings then takes it herself, goes in, and it's 13 to nothing. Back to the Yellow Jacket defense we go, coming up with another interception in this one by Natalia Odom, and she takes it into the 10-yard line. And then the offense taking over, Kitchings gets down to the 5-yard line. From there, Kitchings will keep it herself. Going in for the score, 
The Jackets go for two. And the pass from Kitchings to Natalia Odom as they take game one against McDonough by a final of 20 to nothing. So we move ahead to game two. Southeast Bullock taking on South Effingham. And again, the Yellow Jacket defense playing tough, batting the ball down on the pass here. And then on offense, Kitchings finds Kayla Adams for a first down as she gets down to the 10-yard line. And then Kitchings keeps it herself from the one. She's in for the score. They'll go for one. And the pass to Adams. Southeast Bullock taking the lead. The Jack and offense unable to get anything done, but the defense coming up with another big play here. Natalia Odom, a nice interception. And then South Effingham once again, the sack here. And then on offense, Barron going deep, showing off her arm. Natalia Odom hauls it in. And then Kitchings. The option, Barron unfortunately intercepted again in the end zone, ending the drive. But Southeast Bullock up 7 to nothing at the half. To the second half we go. Barron running and the pitch. And then Barron looking deep. And once again, it's complete. This one by Kayla Adams. And then when you get close, you go to Kitchings. She gets in for her fourth offensive touchdown of the night. And then the option back to Barron. This time, Adams with the grab. And Southeast Bullock wins by a final of 13-7. to All right, that's going to wrap it up for now. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.